Hello everyone, welcome back to The Kitchen Table. Today on The Kitchen Table, we're gonna be talking about IOC, or Intelligent Orientation Control. Uh, but let's just refer to it as IOC from now on. Uh, and specifically how it relates to the P3, because I've had some questions about that and the, impl uh, the implementation of IOC in the P3 versus, say, the P2. Uh, but before we go any further, it is, of course, The Kitchen Table, and as ever, we must have a beverage when discussing our drones. I am having a string of early mornings uh, recording these lately so i'm back on the coffee yet again um it's the it's some the dregs in this one of some home roasted monsoon malabar uh drunk as a very strong americano so cheers mm. right ioc intelligent orientation control what is it okay so this is um these are some clever modes that the aircraft can use to automatically go where you want it to go irrespective of the way it's actually pointing so rather than following its nose it will follow a certain direction um, now there are three main intelligent orientation control modes two of which are implemented on the phantom 2 but only one of which currently is on the p3 either pro or advanced with the rest um promised soon by dji but they've been saying that since april uh, so um, a quick brief overview of the three um, modes. Um, the first one we'll talk about, uh, and I'm, by the way, I'm gonna use for demonstration purposes, my, my, my uh, um, this is just my favorite thing in the world, my old Hubsun X4, which has been through more motors than I care to think of, and it's currently held together with bits of electrical tape. But this is fab. I always recommend to anyone who wants to get into something this size, while you're waiting for it to be delivered, grab one of these. They're only about 30 or 40 quid with a, with a handful of batteries as well. Um, and you can fly it indoors. Uh, it's big enough to be reasonably kind of equivalent to something like this. It's not one that, like those tiny nanos, but it's small enough that you can whiz it around the house and annoy the dog. And it doesn't matter if it's raining outside. And this will give you a really good idea of how the controls work without all of the GPS and the electronics backup. Um, and it's this that helped me to fly kind of nose in uh, um, and, you know, not have to worry too much if I lose satellite reception bits and pieces. Just, I really rate them really good things. Anyway, meanwhile, back at the point. So let's do um, course lock, first of all. Uh, we'll, we'll point this face. Course lock is very much like this grid or a box. If you set course lock, uh, basically, whichever direction the nose of the aircraft was at takeoff, it will kind of imagine that there's a box uh, around it. And so when I press forward on the right stick, forward is following the line of its nose. Left is sliding 90 degrees to that and pulling back on the right stick is coming back along whatever line that nose was. Now, if I'm, I can be facing like this and it will still be push the stick away. It will follow that orientation, pull it back this left and right. Obviously pretty useful if you want to do something like set up a tracking shot. Say you took off with your nose like that, you want to track and follow somebody walking along this way. There's the course lock that's been set. Aircraft can face the person and all you have to do is push away from you with the right stick and it will track along the same course that you've set, keeping that distance the same. Quite useful, I've used that in films, filming things a, a few times myself. Uh, similarly, of course, if you wanted to do a a sort of yaw as you went, it would maintain the track whilst doing that. Very useful. The other one is um, home lock, which is less like a grid and more like a circle or a wheel. If you imagine, you know, it's set the home location in the middle in the hub of a wheel. Um, and if you fly off, no matter what direction you're facing, if you engage home lock, when you pull back with the right stick, it will come back towards home wherever it is on the on the sort of rim of that imaginary reel it will come in on a spoke like spokes on a wheel it will doesn't matter pulling back will always bring it back to home people have used that as a sort of get out of jail free card although i've done previous videos where i have suggested that you really ought to learn how to regain orientation by eye in case you know you suddenly lose your satellite uh signal and then these modes uh, the, the return to home, uh, sorry, the home lock mode won't, won't operate. So that's home lock. And the last one is point of interest, which is again a circular kind of one, but basically it's where the aircraft will keep the camera pointed on something that you want it to, and then it will prescribe an arc or a circle, and it will automatically do all the yawing for you to keep the camera perfectly pointed at that object while you 
go around it in a circle or an arc. Those are the three. Now in the P2 and the P1, you could engage the intelligent orientation control, something in the P2, sorry, I think the P1, it was already, already available out the box. In the P2, you, it wasn't available out the box and you had to change into NASA mode using the software. And again, I've done videos on, on all of that and I'll put links down in the description. Um, but you could access home lock and course lock, not point of interest. The Phantom 3, you can access it via the app um, there's a the, 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 going to the section there and going to the advanced section you can turn it on uh, but at the moment you can only use course lock so that's the one which is like a box or a grid as we did here um, and that's the only one you can use and you have to switch it to the F flight mode to operate it on the transmitter um, and that does mean that it takes it out of, it doesn't, it's ignoring the GPS. It's basically using its compass and its barometer to maintain a course. It doesn't really need the GPS, of course. It doesn't care. Um, it, it's keeping a heading, a compass heading um, locked in. So at the moment, that's all there is. A lot of people have said, oh, why hasn't it got home lock? That's really useful. And again, my answer is yes, it can be, but please... There were lots of people who learned to rely on home lock with their Phantom 2s. And when it all went a bit wrong, um, they then couldn't get things back by eye. So, you know, just need to be a little bit careful with that. Um, so for the minute, I have no idea where, when or if they'll be putting the other one, the other modes in. They are mentioned in the user manual. If you look at the uh, DJI user manual, the very last... Well, the very last kind of substantive section in the, one of the index pages at the back. There's a little table about IOC and it mentions point of interest and home lock and tells you how they operate and the modes they operate in, but it says coming soon. Um, and I noticed they updated their user manual about two days ago. Um, well, a bit, a bit further ago in the past now from when, when this will be published. But um, uh, so yeah, at the end of July, uh, there is a new update and I couldn't e easily spot what differences there were. Uh, it may well be that they've just tweaked spelling mistakes or something like that. So there we are, just a really brief overview. As I say, I've done videos before at a bit more in depth on IOC for the Phantom 2 line. And if you want to, I'll, I'll put links on the screen or down in the description to, to go and have a look at those. But it was just to clear up the confusion about what is and isn't available in the P3, the Pro and, and Advanced at the moment. It's only course lock. That was it, just a quick one as promised. Many thanks indeed for watching as ever. Uh, if you find the videos useful, then you know if you're not already, uh, if you could subscribe, that'd be fantastic. And a thumbs up never goes amiss. And thanks to everyone who supported the channel uh, by either you know visiting one of the support links down below or by uh, buying a mug or by being a channel patron. I really appreciate all your support and it's, um, it's enabling me to, to do lots of more interesting things. And I've got, already got some really cool things lined up for uh, throughout the summer and later on this year. Many thanks indeed for your time and I will see you next time back on the kitchen table. Until then, cheers.